Americans had it on their New Year vision boards, right, and resolutions for 2022, taking their fitness journey to the next level. At first, the first of the year, many of us are eating cleaner and flocking to gyms to build up muscle and to stay lean. As for the ladies, they're getting their bodies snatched for summertime. The timing of the new variant, Omicron, could not have come at a worse time. Now, a few of you may be rethinking going to your gym, right, to avoid COVID. Well, let's get some answers first. Joining us now to talk about fitness during the pandemic, we have emergency medicine doctor, uh, Dr. Hero Tipranini. And we also have Curtis Starks. He's a fitness guru and online body transformation coach. It's a pleasure to have you both. So, Doc, we'll start with you. A few of us here at BNC, some of the ladies were coming into the new year, were focused on keeping our body right. Is there a way for folks like us to make it all work right and stay safe at the same time? Well, absolutely. And I think this is a great, great uh, topic that we're discussing because we do want everyone to stay healthy. And look, we know this is that time to make those New Year's resolutions. It's never a bad time to get in shape and take care of your your heart and lungs, your, you know, your uh, muscle strength and just lean up and and get stronger and get healthier. And so COVID obviously presents its own unique challenges. Uh, we know that there are a lot of gyms that require folks to show proof of vaccination. They require them to wear masks. Um, and remember, there are a lot of outdoor activities that folks can do depending on where you live and your climate. But, you know, even going for, for regular walks every day, um, these simple things that everybody can do, I think are so important. We want to keep everybody healthy. It's also going to make you a little safer and more protected from COVID because obviously staying in, in good cardiopulmonary health is good for your body. It helps you fight infections. It keeps you strong. Uh, it's all uh, working in a positive way, but there are are ways to do it safely and I think everybody's individual gym and you know their their communities their levels of community spread all of those factors are really important in figuring out what is safe for you all right Curtis now this question is for you doc thank you for that there's some yeah. there's some uh, upside there to staying healthy right not just looking good but your body doing what Absolutely. it needs to do on the inside for folks who don't want to go to the gym right how can we take our fitness level to the next level at home what are some moves we can do? Some, some really creative moves, and I'm gonna say Peloton got it right, um, was to, you know, some, some on, online programming. Um, we were fortunate enough to maybe 2014 before um, COVID hit, they had no idea that it was gonna happen, um, develop an online presence. Um, so that's the best way if you want to um, just get your body in shape, in a safe in a safe space is just kind of kind of you and and, and and you're you're more or less you're gonna feel safe um i think now because of the, the big box gyms like like the 24 e's and the planet fitness um things of that nature i think the problem goes um and has everybody kind of freaked out because if you go into the inside those gym it's such it, it's big and so many people and you really don't know they're going to kind of clean the equipment afterwards and things like that. But I think if you can get with a great online uh, program, on-demand program that you can do at the comfort of your home, um, that's that'd be excellent. And I'm going to agree with the doctor is that, you know, the, the more cardiovascular shape you stay in, I'm finding out that, you know, people are kind of, you know, putting some more protection um, even when they're vaccinated as well. So um, getting those online programs is really great. All right. Now, uh, Doc, back to you. Let's talk about COVID spreading at the gym. I mean, mm. how do, how, how do mm -hmm. we stay safe? Yeah, that's a great question. And I think there are ways to stay safe, but I think it takes everybody's participation, right? There are gyms that have clear signs on the doors that everybody have to, has to show proof of vaccination. They have to wear masks. And it's important that everybody is complying with that. And, you know, there are also uh, guidelines of how to clean equipment, keeping everything clean. Um, the data also shows that there are certain things in certain areas of the gym that can be a little safer because you may not be spreading those respiratory droplets in a contained space. Like, uh, you know, if you have classes in a, in a specific classroom, uh, say it's aerobics or Zumba or something like that, there you're going to have a confined space, maybe not the greatest ventilation, whether people are wearing masks or not, you're going, to, you're going to have some transmission of respiratory droplets. That's a higher risk area than say, where you're just in the mm -hmm. weight room and people are a little bit further apart. There may not be that, you right. know, that constant sort of spraying of respiratory droplets. 
Um, but there are ways to stay healthy. I think we have to talk to the gym manager, managers and find out what their techniques are to keep the equipment clean. Um, but again, you know what Curtis mentioned, there are so many things online. There are yoga videos, there are aerobics videos, there are so many things. So if anybody is hesitant about going to their local gym, which is completely understandable, especially if you're immunocompromised or at higher risk, there are so many other ways that you can stay healthy. We want to make sure everybody pays attention to keeping healthy and staying strong, regardless of, of whether they can go to the gym or they do it at home. All right. Now, Curtis, we know that it's not all just about like weightlifting, right? It's not just about cardio. It's also about right. eating right. So talk about that as well, how it goes hand in hand. It, it go, they, they actually go hand in hand, um, like 100%. You can't do one without the other. Um, and again, now a safe way to do it is, I mean, you can order food to come to your house now, you know, and to have and just eat really clean. So the main thing I say, don't don't treat like brain surgery. Just you know, keep it simple. If you if, if you don't eat it, you can't eat it. You know, especially on my meal plan. As I said, if it's not on there, it's not on there. But you don't want to make it where you're overthinking. Um, also, that the exercise, the movement piece has to come with it as well because again, they both work hand in hand. Yeah. Um, and that's that's just the, yeah, that's the best way to um. A, approach it. So I call it 90-10. Um, I have a 90-10 rule. It's like, hey, if you can eat eat correct for Monday through Monday through Thursday, you know, Friday, Saturday, 10% reward yourself. So it's kind of like a reward. So you want to make, you don't want to make it like it's punishment. Like, God, I got to eat healthy the whole time because <laughs> reality, people are not going to do it a hundred percent. So you want to yeah. reward yourself. So when I came up with that 90, 10 rule, you know, it, it, it was great. So love that. So I want to actually finish with you. Um, we're talking about going to the gym and working out, but this is a business for yeah. you. Can you talk about how the pandemic, if, at all, you've been impacted. Perhaps you haven't. Yeah, yeah. It's it's been it's 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 been different, you know. So because we've had to have gym owners readjust our model, you know, and as um, clients, they have to readjust their approach on how 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 they want to want to go. Because if you used to to a big group like twelve to twenty four people, now you don't really want to do that. So you kind of want to keep your 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 class is small your session so and what we did we just kind of you know made us semi-private personal training where it's, it's it's two to four people you know spaced out but you know uh, adjusting to that it, it was really difficult we like i said we kind of on the on the front end of it um 2014 and when when covid hit we like cool we just kind of did a virtual thing and turned it to um, a hybrid program, program, which now people can come in and out, you know, if, if they want to as well. So um, it's just a lot of adjustment for both gym owners and um, clients as well. All right. I want to thank you both for stopping by. I wish you both the best on your fitness journey. And please wish me the best as well, myself and the ladies here at BNC. <laughs> <laughs> All the best. Good luck. All good the luck. Best. Good luck. We'll take All that. <laughs> All right, we're taking a look now at President Biden's federal vaccine mandate. The first phase is already in effect, requiring private companies with more than 100 employees to be vaccinated. Just Friday, the Supreme Court heard oral arguments against enforcing that mandate. Joining us now from Washington is BNC correspondent Candace Cole with more. Candace? Hi, Tashani. Well, initially, the deadline for employees to be vaccinated was last week on January 4th. However, OSHA decided to push that deadline back while some of the legal questions surrounding this mandate are cleared up. Now, the mandate also calls for employees who remain unvaccinated to submit to weekly coronavirus testing and to wear a mask at all times. With the rapid spread of the Omicron variant, the Supreme Court heard oral arguments from the National Federation of Independent Businesses to decide if the vaccine mandate will be upheld or if it is, in fact, a governmental overreach. The mandate also applies to health care workers whose employers receive funding from Medicare and Medicaid. OSHA is expected to issue citations to those companies and corporations who do not comply. It's also been reported that the federal government agencies have now been given the green light to enforce stricter measures against federal workers who refuse to get vaccinated. And we've also heard from the White House that this vaccine mandate is critical to making sure we can get over 70% of the population vaccinated. We also heard Dr. Fauci advise that we could start seeing cases up to a million a day as this surge continues. Tashani. All right, Candace, thank you for that report. BNC Live will be right back.
Open the door to a world of opportunities. Earn your accredited high school diploma online with Penn Foster. Whether you're a full-time student or working adult, Penn Foster makes it easy for you to unlock your potential. Because everyone learns differently, you can study at your own pace, at home or on your mobile device, leaving time for work and family. We provide easy to understand course content and a support team to help you earn your high school diploma. You can even explore exciting career pathways to discover your passion before you graduate. We offer affordable, flexible payment options to fit your budget, so you can join the more than 200,000 students who have earned their high school diploma with Penn Foster. Get the education you deserve, the skills you need, and the confidence to achieve your goals. Enroll today. Call or visit us online at PennFosterHighSchool.com to learn about our special offers. Ever wonder what everyone's doing on their phones? They're banking with Bank of America. His girlfriend just caught the bouquet, so 